But we're going to start with the battle at the bottom. Now, I have to, I have to say firstly, because I've been very critical about Everton and Frank Lampard as well, I have to say what a great result that was for him and them at the weekend. Uh, I wouldn't say no one saw that coming, but they were the type of games away at Leicester. You thought if they are going to slip up, because their away form has been dreadful, if mm. they are going to slip up, it's going to be against Leicester. And they had a chance really early on Leicester. I think Schmeichel saved it. But either way, I thought if that goes in, they're in a world of trouble. But fair play to Frank Lampard and Everton. They they now look like they're they're safe. I mean, it's still... I wouldn't say early, but it's still one of those things that's not sorted itself out yet. But maybe two weeks ago, I would have put my money on Everton to go down. I think I put my money on Everton to be safe now. Would you? Yeah, I, I think you're right. I'd have you right. I, I'd say as well. Two, two or three weeks ago, I had it as a, a shootout between Burnley and Everton mm. to, to go down. Um, only because I, I knew who Leeds were playing. I knew Leeds weren't in a good form, but I could just I couldn't see Everton picking up the results they did. Beating Chelsea, then Leicester. I, I honestly couldn't see it happening. The way they were playing, they looked low on confidence. They looked moody on the pitch. Massively turned mm. it around, and and I'm with you. I think Everton will be safe. I, I, that is incredible when you say they beat Chelsea and yeah. then they beat Leicester. Those are two games where I I said many a time they're not going to get any points from it, even a draw. Yep. and they got six points from it. That's remarkable. Well, they they went to Anfield as well, didn't they? Went to Anfield. <laughs> Look. We had a call, we was at the EFL show and we had a few callers saying how proud they were of the Everton side and, you know, they dominated the game and, and you know, I got into a little bit of a debate with one of them and said, well, you didn't dominate the game. You had mm. a few chances. If you had, if you could finish at the time, if you was confident, maybe you'd have got a goal up. I just felt Liverpool would have just upped it another gear. I think, I can't even remember, 15, 20% possession there, that's not dominating a game. Mm. So after that, I just felt... They're not confident enough. They're, they're, it's just going to dwindle away the season for them. To then beat Chelsea, and we know Chelsea's not in great form, and Leicester, there was a kind of not much to play for for Leicester. So mm -hmm. to, to, to win those two games has been a fantastic turnaround because I had them massive favourites to go down. And, you know, it's changed again. Like I said, what, the what season's topsy-turvy. What did you make of Frank Lampard's comments that Jordan Pickford could be one of the best goalkeepers in the world at the moment? <laughs> well, the last couple of performances, you'd have to say that... <laughs> He's about right on current form. Yeah, of course. I don't. I wouldn't say he is the best goalie, but on current form, he's producing some unbelievable. So the one he took mm. square in the face, I think it was against Chelsea, mm -hmm. was phenomenal save. And I know sometimes is that a save when it smashes well, you in the face? I, I was just going to say sometimes people say no, it's luck. It's luck. It, it's not. It's not like it's positioning. It's where you yeah, you're, you spread you're, you're training yourself okay. day in day out to be in the right position at the right time. A lot of the time it hits you and goes in, but this time he's there, he's done it, and you know he was brave to, to take one right in, in the grid as it was. and In the mooey. In the mooey. Would you call it the grid? In the grid, yeah. I've never heard that before. The grid? Yeah, the grid. I think it's like Have teeth. you just made that up? It's like teeth, there's a grid. Again, you've just said words that don't connect. <laughs> what do you mean, teeth, the grid? What do you I mean? think I've heard that before. No, you haven't. He took it the, right in the, the grid. The Anyone grid. in the... In the crash of that, right in the grid, no. Oh, there's a little bit of a murmur. Joe no, was like, mm, I think I might have done. Joe, yes or no? Have you heard? No, he says no. No oh. one's heard of the word. Took it in the grid. Yeah, it's a new one for you. I, I think took it right in the grid. Mooey's better. Mooey could, it could be different areas though, Mooey. No. Grid. It's right in the grid. <laughs> no, you're just making it up. <laughs> no, but if I say it with a bit of emphasis, right in the grid means, yeah. Do you mean grill? No, I, I might mean grill, but at the moment I what mean, mean grill. What do you mean I might mean? You're in control of your thoughts, No, I right? mean grid. It might be grill, right. but I mean grid. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's talk about Leeds United, shall we? They're now in the bottom three. I mean, it's goal difference that separates them and Burnley. Here, uh, here's my first question. It's goal difference, right, yeah. which separates. They've conceded. I had, to, I had to double check this when I got the information. They've conceded. 74 goals. Only Norwich have conceded worse. That's one more. Let me say that again. Leeds have conceded 74 goals. Now, I, I know that recent results for Leeds, I think they've got, what, two defeats out of the last two, a draw in the last three. And you could question whether or not they're playing better football. They were when Jesse March came in. They were playing, I think, a, a better brand of football. But I know that some fans, probably more now Leeds fans, have said we're better with Bielsa. But are they in this position, and I'm talking about the goal difference, minus 74 goals, are they in this? Sorry, conceded seventy four. Are they in this position because of Bielsa? Because of Bielsa ball and the fun attacking, free flowing football that Leeds were producing at the beginning of the season? I mean, you'd have to say yes, they are. Obviously, not solely Bielsa. The players are to blame as well. But a lot of supporters, and you've you'd have had it many times. We've had it when I've been on the shows. A lot of the supporters of Leeds phone up. Oh, we love watching Leeds play and. Well, you don't now, like, because you're in the bottom three and you're in serious danger of mm. going down. Are you still going to phone up saying we're we're happy, we don't mind? To concede seventy four goals is, is 
It's not good enough. That, that's the main reason, let's be honest. That's the main reason they're, they're going down. Out of the bottom, I'm just looking now, up to Everton. They've scored two more than Everton, seven more than Burnley, seven more than Watford, and, oh, I don't know, 17 more than Norwich. So, in terms of goals, absolutely fine. Um, goals enough should have kept them in the division, but con- to concede 74. Burnley above them, 49. That's why, the, obviously, the goal difference is it's phenomenal. And, yeah... Bielsa ball the first season we always used to say oh, we love watching Leeds and we spoke off air about mm-hmm. that because you know you'd get goals in the game that's all mm. not because they played like exciting football it was an exciting game either way I think they're in serious serious trouble and to say that after last season is harsh and I, I might have been here I might have sat here with you at the start of the season and you asked me what Leeds aim should be should they be aiming for whatever position I said 17th that's all they should be aiming yeah, for because yeah. the second season we see Sheffield United do it the, the year before 17th should have been the aim just quickly do you, we've got so much to cram in do you blame Luke Ailey what, I mean that was a reckless challenge wasn't it uh, absolutely horrendous challenge he knew, what he, he knew what you, you played the highest level you know what you're doing exactly when you do what that he was doing. And, and what he's doing is he's it, it's preempted. You're, you're kind of waiting for the ball I, I, was, I wasn't the tackler but I've played with a lot of players that could tackle and you see it in training you see it in games you wait because you can put a bit on them as well he just got it completely wrong and w- what also was bad was the lazy refereeing should have seen that immediately as a red card. Why that had to go to VAR, I don't lazy know. Referee. It was lazy referee and he just, he, he bottled the decision to give a red card and he took it to VAR, okay. probably knowing it was a red card. All right. If you were going to speak out of your grid right now and predict the team that's going to finish 18th, who would it be? Leeds. It'll be Leeds. Yeah. Right? Okay. Uh, Leeds fans, you can find out and talk about what we've just spoken about. Burnley, Everton as well. Who are your favourites? Southampton can't get drawn into it, can they? No, no, look, I agree with uh, that. Mathematically, they can, I know, but no, it would be okay. a, a miracle. <laughs>